Our first speaker is Anna Tsvetkova. Anna Tsvetkova. Uh, uh, she will speak about uh, uh, real valued semi classical approximation for the asymptotic with complex valued phases and application to multiple orthogonal Hermit polynomials. So, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank organizers for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity to make a detailed talk. Uh, I'm happy to be here and to present our joint work with Alexander Ivanovich Aptekarev, Sergei Yurich Dubrakhotov, and Dmitry Nikolaevich Tulikov. And it is about asymptotics of multiple orthogonal Hermit polynomials. Mm -hmm. uh, so let us formulate the problem. We consider multiple orthogonal Hermit polynomials with two indices, and they can be defined by the following uh, uh, recurrence relations. So we start from the recurrence relations with such initial conditions. And our aim is to construct asymptotics of diagonal polynomials, so for n1 is equal to n2, as n tends to infinity. And in this situation, the previous system can be rewritten in such way with the following initial conditions. And uh, the result, the asymptotics, was obtained uh, using two different uh, approaches. The first approach was developed by Alexander Aptekarev and Dmitry Tulikov, and uh, it uses uh, basis decomposition. But today, I'd like to discuss another approach, uh, which uh, uses uh, pseudo differential equations. It was developed by Sergei Dobrakhotov and me, and we call it real valued semi classical approximation for asymptotics with complex valued phases. There are a lot of other approaches, um, other works uh, with brilliant results, which uh, uh, work for classical cases. But uh, our case is not classical. Uh, we have multiple uh, orthogonal polynomials. And there are some approaches of our, uh, there are some advantages, advantages of our approach. The first is that we use the recurrence relations, not the differential equation. In some situations, it must, might be important. The second is that we avoid using a complex plane. I'm not sure that the audience thinks that it is um, an advantage. <laughs> but for us, um, for semi-classical approximation, uh, this fact is important. If we want to use some standard uh, methods, it is important uh, to be on a real line. Uh, the next advantage is uh, that uh, our approach can be generalized to multi-dimensional cases. I mean to cases with multi-indices when they're different. Uh, we have some results but, uh, uh, which give us such hope, but uh, the work is in progress. And uh, the last but not least, that uh, our approach gives a global asymptotics and in some sense uniform asymptotics. So uh, let us discuss this approach. Uh, first of all, I'd like to explain the idea of the approach on the classical cases for, for classical orthogonal polynomials, which can be defined uh, as uh, a solutions of uh, the second order recurrence derivations, the second order difference equations. And then I uh, uh, modify this approach to our case, to multiple orthogonal polynomials, there are some difficulties and some differences. And uh, at the end, I show the result and show our asymptotics. OK. So we start, start, from start, the start, general, start, general, start. we start from the general description. We consider a second order difference equation for the function un. And uh, here, coefficients are polynomials in Z and N. And uh, the initial conditions are polynomials in Z. And our aim is to obtain the asymptotics as N tends to infinity. Uh, what is the idea? Uh, we would like to obtain a pseudo differential equation. So we introduce a small parameter and a sm smooth function f such that restriction of this function to a lattice gives our uh, unknown function u. Uh, this idea was proposed by Viktor Pavlovich Maslov, and we decided to use it in our work. 
Mm. So after that, we can rewrite our difference, equi difference equation uh, as a pseudo differential. Here it is uh, uh, shift operators. They shift the argument. So if we restrict such function to the lattice, we obtain u and n plus 1. Uh, if we restrict such function to a lattice, we obtain n plus minus 1. And so if we restrict this equation to a lattice, we obtain our difference equation. But now we have a continuous problem, a pseudo differential uh, equation. Here x, it is a continuous variable, and it corresponds to the original number n. Z, it is a parameter of the new problem, and corresponds to the original variable z of the original problem. And uh, the, it is a pseudo differential equation because its symbol, uh, here it is the symbol, and symbol, it is not a polynomial in P. So it is not differential equation. It is a pseudo differential equation because the symbol is functions of P. And uh, the next, uh, the first problem, the first difficulty for classical standard uh, approaches, that the symbol is complex. And uh, we uh, consider the Hamiltonian, so the principal part of this symbol, as h tends to 0, and the Hamiltonian is complex too. So we can't use some standard uh, methods like uh, uh, WKB approximation. And we need uh, to do something to solve this difficulty. And the idea is the following. Let us try to seek the solution in the WKB form, but the phase S is uh, complex. If we substitute such solution to our equation, we obtain a hermit jacobi equation with complex phase. And uh, the corresponding to this equation characteristic polynomial is a second, has a second order. And uh, if uh, in the domain where uh, this polynomial has uh, two complex roots, it is the domain of oscillations. In the domain where this polynomial has two uh, real roots, it is the, the domain. Uh, yes, it is uh, where two real roots. It is domain of uh, decreasing no oscillations. Uh, where two complex roots, it is domain of oscillating. And this uh, equation defines focal points, so the points of transition between these two domains. Uh, but we still have a complex phase. How can uh, I'd like to present the, uh, the idea how we can solve this problem with a complex phase? Uh, so we have a complex Hamiltonian. Here it is. It is a complex um, uh, Hamiltonian Jacobi equation for, for original complex Hamiltonian. But if we substitute the WKB uh, form to our equation, we can, after that, equate the imaginary part to zero. And uh, it gives us some equation to the imaginary part of the phase. So we obtain one real Hamiltonian Jacobi equation for imaginary part of the phase. And uh, if we equate the real part of our original uh, complex Hamiltonian, we obtain uh, the second real uh, Hamiltonian Jacobi equation for the real part of the phase. So we split our original complex Hamiltonian into two reals. Here, you can see them here, h1 and h2. It was the idea, but we need to implement this idea. How can we do it? Let us uh, seek the solution in the following form. Here, this is WKB approximations, which corresponds to the imaginary part of the phase. So this uh, approximation corresponds to the Hamiltonian h1. And function g corresponds to the real part of the phase. So it corresponds to the Hamiltonian h2. So our aim is to find such functions s0 and a0, uh, a0 that uh, the symbol for the function g, uh, we substitute the solution, we obtain the equation for the function g. And the symbol for this uh, uh, operator must be real and must have such form. Here, as functions v0 and v1 are reals and smooth functions. 
Uh, and if we do this, we obtain the expressions for the functions S0 and A0. And we obtain the following equation for, a, uh, for the function G. Uh, it looks like the discrete Schrodinger equation. Here the expressions for the function V0 and V1. And so the next step is to find the asymptotic solution of this equation. It can be done using the Maslow canonical operator. Uh, and I'd like to say a few words about this operator. Uh, it is some construction which can give the asymptotic solution, global asymptotic solution in every zone. For example, and the, the construction of uh, Maslow canonical operator contains Lagrangian manifolds. This operator was uh, uh, developed, was uh, proposed by Viktor Pavlovich Maslow, then developed by his colleagues and uh, students. Some of them you can see on the slide. So it contains the construction of Lagrangian manifold lambda. What is it? Mm, in general case, for in multidimensional cases, the Lagrangian manifold can be obtained using the trajectories of the corresponding Hamiltonian system. But for one-dimensional case, uh, our case is one-dimensional, the Lagrangian manifold, it is the level line of the Hamiltonian. So we have a level line of the Hamiltonian, and we can cover these Lagrangian manifolds by charts, by regular charts. So the uh, map to the axis is one-to-one one, is one to one correspondence between this chart and the uh, axis. And we have some chart with singularity, with focal point, but in our problem it is a, a turning point. After that, the construction of uh, what, what uh, um, the mass of canonical operator can do. We can write the answers on, in regular charts, and this answer will have the form of WQB approximation. Then we can write the answer in the uh, chart with singularity, and uh, the expression for this answer is a little bit complicated. But after that, we can glue all these answers together uh, using the math of indices and uh, uh, obtain the result on the whole line, on the whole line. But uh, the construction is uh, not so simple, and the result of last year's, which was published in this uh, work, that uh, if Lagrangian manifold has a turning point, we can re represent our uh, Maslow canonical operator in the form of the sum of every functions. Area and area, area A and area A prime. So the answer, the mass of canonical operator is the following expression. But the mass of canonical operator gives uh, a bounded, uh, bounded solution, and using the same ideas, we can obtain un unbounded solution with area function B and B prime. Uh, so it is two and independent solutions of our discrete Schrodinger equation. But we need, uh, there are some expressions which I used in the previous slide. But so we have two independent solutions, psi1 and psi2. But we need to find the connection between them. So we need to find these coefficients. Because uh, our problem, uh, the variable on our problem is x. So coefficients depends on the parameter of our problem, which is z. Uh, so, how can we find these coefficients? The idea is the following. First of all, if we consider the asymptotics of our solution as z tends to infinity, then this asymptotics contains only if uh, only, uh, only function area A or only function area B. Uh, why? Because if our solution decreases, then uh, function area B is absent because the function area B uh, increases. So uh, in this case, uh, the result doesn't contain, as z tends to infinity, doesn't contain the function area b. And then if our result is increasing, then the function area e does not contribute to the asymptotics because it decreases. So as z tends to infinity, the solution contains only one of the basic solutions, psi1 of psi2. Psi so after that, we need to find only one coefficient as z tends to infinity. And how can we do it? We need to compare these asymptotics as z tends to infinity with the coefficient at the highest degree of our original polynomial. If we compare these coefficients, we obtain our unknown function c, 
C1 or C2. But uh, it gives us the result only in the uh, neighborhood of uh, one of the focal points. Uh, in the neighborhood of the focal points, which is closest to the infinity. But we need to obtain the result on the whole line, to, so we need to obtain the result in other focal points. How can we find the coefficients? We, uh, we try to seek the asymptotics in other focal points in such way, and then compare these asymptotics with these asymptotics in the zone of oscillations. We know this coefficient, and the comparison gives us the, the function k. So it gives us the whole, the total result. I tried to uh, show it on the picture. Here it is an example for generalized Laguerre polynomials. This uh, curve, it is a curve of focal points on the plane y, which corresponds to a regional uh, variable z, and x, which corresponds to number n. So if n is fixed, there are two focal points. And uh, in this focal point, the answer contains only the function area a. So using the behavior of our asymptotics at this infinity, we can obtain the coefficient here. After that, we try to find the, the asymptotics in this focal point as a combination of, function, of functions area A and functions area B, and compare the result in the zone of oscillations, we obtain the coefficients here. So we obtain the, the total result. I, did, I decided not to show the answer. It is quite cumbersome, but uh, here is the picture. So the solid red line, it is the original Laguerre polynomial. The green uh, dashed line, it is the asymptotics in the neighborhood of the right focal point. And the blue dashed line, it is the asymptotics in the left focal point. And as you see, even for small n, the match is quite good. OK. Uh, so what is the algorithm for classical cases, for the cases of the second order of difference equation? We reduce our difference equation to the pseudo differential, so if we find the coefficients. Then we find the function C0 and A0, which corresponds to the imaginary part of the phase. After that, we we'll obtain a discrete Schrodinger equation and find so basic solutions via area functions. And the last step is to find the coefficients C1 and C2. This algorithm was, uh, will be published soon in the um, Russian Journal of Mathematical Physics, but it is not the topic of my talk. I'd like to <laughs> say about, I'd like to discuss the multiple trigonal polynomials, Hermit polynomials. So uh, first of all, let's start from classical Hermit polynomials. For classical Hermit polynomials, we can implement the described uh, algorithm because it is the second order difference equation. And here, the curve of focal points is symmetric. There are two focal points. And the answer in the, both of the, in the neighborhood of the both focal points so contains only area function A. So here's the answer for the classical Hermit polynomials. Uh, OK. Uh, yes. And uh, as you see, it is the uniform asymptotics. So it works for every z on the whole real line. And uh, let us now discuss the multiple trigonal polynomials. So we need to modify our approach to a multidimensional case. Uh, here we have such a uh, system, which defines our diagonal Hermit polynomial. And uh, the scheme is the similar. First of all, we need to reduce our recurrent observations to observe the differential equation. But the difference is that the corresponding characteristic polynomial or the corresponding spectral curve is the curve of, second, of the third uh, order. In the classical cases, it is the curve of the, third, the second order. Here we have the curve of the third order. So we need to split our equations into two to obtain uh, equations which correspond to the curve of the second order. The next step is to get rid of complexity, because the symbols of these uh, operators will, will be complex. And the last step, so we have two, uh, two equations. We have two different solutions. We need to find the connection between these solutions, so we need to find the coefficients. It is a scheme. Let us implement the scheme. So first, we need to reduce to the pseudo differential equation. As in the previous case, we introduce a small parameter and a spoof function, such as I its restriction to a lattice give us our, uh, our diagonal polynomial. And the function, uh, 
pattern such that its restriction gives us uh, such polynomial. Now after that, we can rewrite the original system of differential difference equations in the form of two pseudo differential equations. Here again, it is shift operators. And then uh, I remind that x corresponds to the original number n, y corresponds to the original uh, variable z, and a corresponds to the original parameter a al alpha. But here y and a are parameters, and x is a variable. Uh, so after that, get rid of theta, we obtain a uh, one pseudo differential equation for psi. Uh, but the symbol is complex, and the corresponding uh, spectral curve is the curve of such order. So the next step is to split this equation into twos. The idea is similar. Let us seek the solution in that WKB form. This form is not global. It works only in some bounded domain. By such um, representation gives us uh, the Hamiltonian Jacobi equation. So if we substitute this uh, approximation to the original, to the pseudo differential equation, we obtain a Hamiltonian Jacobi equation corresponds to such characteristic polynomial, to such polynomial of the third order. So now we need to study the properties of this polynomial. And the first and the crucial moment uh, that one of the roots of this polynomials is global and uh, real global root, and this root can be separated. So we have one global real root and two other roots, lambda plus, lambda minus, that can be real. Then and then after focal point they become complex. Uh, so if we separate this uh, real root, we can expand our solution into the sum. This solution corresponds to the root lambda 0, and this solution corresponds to the uh, two other roots. And if these roots are complex, we have uh, the zone of oscillations. If these roots are real, we have, have the, the zone of decreasing. And the focal points uh, are defined by the following equation. And the next good property, is nice property, is that this this equation has only one real solution in x. So it is only one focal, for each uh, fixed y, it is only one focal point on the axis x. But if we try to find solutions in the variable y, then it can be some difference. So uh, the, it can be only one focal point, or it, it can be two focal points. So here is the zone of oscillations, and here is the zone of decreasing. So, OK, now we can, uh, we can expand our characteristic polynomial into the product of linear part and of the quadratic part, and to express the coefficients a, b in terms of the real root lambda 0, which is separated. Uh, after that, we can apply these two operators to our original pseudo differential equation, which gives us two different equations. One of them is defined by the operator H0 and has a solution psi 0. The second is defined by the operator H1 and has a solution psi. And uh, the, after the last step is to find these coefficients. But uh, as you see, the symbols of these operators are still complex. So first of all, we need to get rid of complexity. And the third step is to get rid of complexity. If we consider the uh, equation uh, defined by the operator H0, e, the solution psi 0 corresponds to the global, uh, global root lambda 0, so it can be thought in the form of WQB approximation. And uh, if we substitute such solution to our equation, we obtain a real, a real Hamiltonian Jacobi equation with real Hamiltonian and then transport equation for the amplitude A. So here's the answer. It is the solution psi 0. What about the second equation with the operator H1? I, I, the symbol is the following. And it is similar to the classical situation for classical uh, uh, orthogonal polynomials. So we can divide uh, our uh, complex Hamiltonian in, into two reals. 
and we can see the level lines of this Hamiltonian. It is a level line of the Hamiltonian H1, and it is global. And we can seek the solution in the WQB form. And the level line of the Hamiltonian H2 looks like a parabola, so it contains a focal point. Uh, so we uh, expand our solution in the, into the product, product where psi1 corresponds to the uh, Hamiltonian H1, psi2 corresponds to the Hamiltonian psi2. For a, psi1, we have a WKB approximation. For psi2, we seek the solution in the form of the Maslow canonical operator. And the answer is the following. Here you can see amplitude for the solution psi1 and the equation for the solution psi2. Now, if we solve this equation, we obtain the following asymptotics in the form of area functions. It is the result of this, this paper. OK, here are the expressions which are used in the previous slide. And the last step is to find the connection between these two solutions. So we have two different solutions. We need to find the coefficients, c0 and c1. What is the idea? The idea is uh, similar to the classical case. We study the asymptotics of this solution as z tends into infinity and compare it with the, with the coefficient at the highest degree of our original diagonal polynomial. Our original diagonal polynomial is a polynomial of the order to n, and uh, the coefficient is 1. So the next step is to find the asymptotics of the solution psi 0 and psi. To do this, we need to find some, com some convenient uh, parameterization of our spectral curve. The first, is idea to, the first idea is to, to use the root lambda 0 as a parameter because coefficients a and b can be expressed in the term of lambda 0. But this idea does not work, because the, our answer contains some complicated integrals. And if we use the following uh, parameterization, we can't find the asymptotics of a solution. And, uh, but we, uh, we can find more convenient uh, uh, parameterization with the parameter mu. Here it is. And this parameterization gives us the answer, because we can find the asymptotics of mu as z, q is the same as z, as z tends to infinity, and the, the asymptotics of mu star, which corresponds to the focal point as z tends to infinity. And so after that, we obtain the asymptotics of our solution psi 0. And the highest degree of uh, this asymptotics as z is minus n. And the highest degree of our original uh, polynomial is 2n, so this solution does not contribute to the highest degree of the original polynomial. And we assume that the coefficient c0 is equal to 0. And if we find the asymptotics of the solution psi1, we obtain some coefficient and compare this coefficient with our coefficient at the highest degree of the original diagonal polynomial, we obtain the function c1. So after that, I can present the result. Here it is. Here the asymptotics. It's global. It's, in some sense, uniform asymptotics. Contains all, only area function a and area function a prime. And here are the expressions which are used in these uh, asymptotics. But uh, we need to test to verify our result. And uh, to do this, it is uh, convenient to present our answer in the parametric form using the parameter mu, and then to illustrate the result. So if we use the parameter mu, the asymptotics in the fall is the following. And if we use the parameter mu, the variable z parameterized, parameterized in a such way. After that, we can draw a graph. Here you see the result for n is equal to 10. Uh, solid blue line, it is the original polynomial. Uh, a dashed red line, it is our asymptotics. Here it is the case of two focal points. And uh, here the case of one focal point. Uh, n is equal to 30. The solid line it is the original uh, diagonal polynomial. It is some problems in the neighborhood of 0. I think it is because of the parameterization of the spectral curve. But in general, mm, the match seems to me is quite good. Uh, and that's all. 
I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. А, Сергей Юрьевич, не говоришь, не слышишь. Да, 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 So there's also an interesting regime where your parameter alpha scales with n. That if alpha is low, is, you change your parameter alpha with n times alpha. Do you think your, mass, your method will work also in that case? Uh, when uh, alpha what? Uh, uh, alpha uh, parameter. Alpha for uh, in your recurrence relation. Let's go to the recurrence relation. Yeah. Ah, we have alpha. Alpha in the mm, classical case, or no, no, in, in, in or this multiple. one. Multiple. Multiple. Uh, we have a or alpha. Alpha. Well, you see, there is oh, alpha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, alpha. Yes. Alpha. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. The result is depends on alpha, and uh, for example. So, can you get ah, alpha? Is, can yes, you replace uh, alpha with varying alpha? alpha yeah. Yes. Uh, the. Um, The decreasing of alpha and n uh, as uh, so as uh, square root. Uh, I try to show one moment, please. Um, uh, sorry. Yes, what here we can see the dependence on small parameter h. So n is here is uh, the scaling variables. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so n Scale is. It. Uh, <laughs> Uh, h is 1 divided by n, and y is a square root of h. The yeah, but maybe you know that if alpha is proportional with n, then there is a new phenomenon. In, in your situation, your polynomials are still very similar to the classical Hamid polynomials, right? Also, yeah, the graphs yeah, show you that. So but uh, if, uh, uh -huh. if alpha is proportional with n, then zeros are on two intervals, and there's a gap in the middle. Uh, I mean, that's one situation. So maybe, I don't know if you're, if you're aware of that. Um, I, I didn't study this case. Uh, yes, we, we consider classical uh, Poncheré rotor synthetics. Mm -hmm. But thank you for the comment. I, I tried to. No, uh, no Arna. No? <laughs> yes, no? Uh, there is a, a re regime uh, and. Uh, In our uh, studies of this problem, of course, we have this uh, regime when you have two uh, interval for zeros and for some critical alpha, you have one interval for zeros. I believe that here you also have the, sa the same uh, situation. Uh, but, uh, yes. May, may I add something, sir? Huh? Yeah. May I add something? Okay. Uh, as a co coauthor uh, Сергей Доброхотов has a comment. Please, Сергей. Comment, thank you. So I think uh, that, uh, so I'm sure that uh, this, the change of regime which uh, uh, Sasha spoke about, that is uh, two zone of oscillation, so one zone is very similar to the quantum mechanical problem with well and double well for certain equations. So, but, but in our case, uh, when you construct the Um, set of uh, focal points, you see that we have the double well, but it's not smooth in the point uh, uh, where we have the change of regimes, we have something like the angle of, of, of this well. Mm. Oh, I, oh, oh, unfortunately, oh. I didn't uh, illustrate the, the curve of focal points. Yes, it is like that. And But here... You could, you could ah, ah, I could, yes, I, uh, yes, it's like uh, this. So here we have, uh, and uh, here is n is equal to uh, alpha squared, something like that. Yes. 
Yes, and here is uh, the two zone, there are two zones of oscillation, and here it is only one zone of oscillation. And the transition zone is n is equal to lambda squared. Yes, this uh, regime is present in, in the result. Yes, yeah. I didn't understand the question. Sorry. Okay, other questions and comments? Andre. Mm -hmm. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to get also like Bessel functions around the origin in the case of like air polynomials? Uh, you only have expression in terms of A-R-E. Uh, yes, I, I think that uh, for large, uh, for large uh, numbers, uh, Bessel function can be expressed in the form of A-R-E function. Maybe uh, here it is the answer why. Uh, we don't uh, have Bessel functions, but uh, uh, to, to tell the truth, I, I saw, I know the papers where the answer is uh, in the form of area function for Laguerre polynomials, and it uh, it can be compared with the answer. It, um, they they correspond to each other. So they have a very complicated function in uh, in the argument of yeah. uh, area functions. Right, maybe. So about media uh, this. The problem about uh, the appearance of uh, Bessel functions, uh, we also discussed with our paper, which will soon appear. So it's, it depends on the set of this uh, something like focal points. Uh, so it's. Uh, uh, I, I can say, we'll say one last uh, remark that yes, if we have Bessel function with a number zero, the Lagrangian manifold has a such singularity, not a turning point. Turn point gives us every function, but such increasing gives a Bessel function uh, with a note, a J note. Yes. But if uh, the number is uh, large, the Bessel function and the area function are the same. It is no difference. Mm -hmm. Any question and comments? Okay, thank you very much. Let's send speaker again.